So when we think of executive function, the paradigm I always say, if you stand at the top of the mountain, um, what are you seeing right now? You're seeing the big picture, right? You're seeing the sort of the general, um, you've got a big, a big picture view. You don't see the details. It's like, okay, this is the overall scenery. This is where we're at. We're looking at over the valley. It's beautiful. But you're not going to be seeing what you see at the bottom of the mountain, which is the leaves. You don't see the trees. You only see the leaves. You don't see the top of the mountain for sure. You don't even know where you're going. If, you, if, you're, if the route suddenly, uh, if, if suddenly you come across a stream and you have to totally change the way you um, hiking or biking, um, that's, that comes into place, cognitive flexibility, as you sort of try to reset your direction and reorganize and retool. So cognitive flexibility really is shifting flexibly between approaches going from the top of the mountain to the bottom of the mountain, back to the top of the mountain. And um, why do I use this analogy? Because this is what's critically important for every aspect of academic work and every aspect of life, being able to focus on the big picture and ignore the irrelevant details. Being able to figure out what's important and what can I ignore. This is important for reading comprehension. It's important for writing. It's important from, um, for note-taking. It's important for math problem-solving. It's important for, for, um, for studying, for tests, so that kids don't spend 20 hours um, re-reading re the chapter in the book for their history test, but they instead say, okay, what's important? Let me take a look at the key ideas. What does my notes say? So how are we going to teach this? It is challenging to think about. So some of the techniques that you can use are sort of fun, beginning with five minute warm ups, jokes, puns, riddles, uh, ambiguous language. Why do I mention these? Because um, these all require flexible thinking with regards to language and linguistic flexibility is a great way of beginning to promote cognitive flexibility because a key part of the academic flexibility you're acquiring from your students is linguistic. It's the re reading, writing, note-taking, they all involve language. So this is really important in terms of reading and writing. As I said, so words like this, note, what are three different meanings? You can use it as an adjective, you can use it as a noun, you can use it as a verb. So the note, the, the musical note, note meaning noticing, or and as an adjective, a notebook. Scale, a scale that you stand on to scale something up, to increase the size, or a scale on a fish. And bar, the candy bar, or to bar a block as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a verb and so on. Cognitive flexibility is important for some of those other issues that are critical, setting goals, um, self-monitoring, managing schoolwork, managing the school day, part of the stress that our kids are feeling right now. We need to teach our students to shift perspectives when they read, when they write, when they solve math problems, to shift from the big idea to the details and back to the big idea.